Welcome to the fourth annual Hawkeye News Awards Banquet. We would also like to welcome our special guests, the cast and crew of the 2006 Shattered Dreams motion picture. on this edition of Hawkeye News. Farewell to the class of 2005. May 28th was the conclusion of many great high school careers as the class of 2005 proudly marched across the stage at the Dallas Convention Center to accept their diplomas. Find out what made this commencement ceremony outstanding in this month's return of District in 60 Seconds. Plus, the annual Relay for Life Cancer Walk returns to Red Oak. After a few years in nearby Midlothian, the walk returned to Billy Goodloe Stadium in June, and the event once again was marked as a great success. Details straight ahead. Also, we welcome back one of our most popular informative segments here on Hawkeye News, The Counselor's Corner. This month, we check in with our wonderful counselors to see what we students need to know to get off to a successful start. Important information coming up. And later, We'll check in with our new WC reporter, India Fernandez, who will be bringing us news and information from the West Campus this year. This month, India introduces us to a couple of new faces working to keep the West Campus safer and drug-free for all students. And finally, Hawkeye News crime reporter J.D. Foster returns with a report on a serious matter, school safety. J.D. went on location at the recently held active shooter training class hosted by Red Oak High School. Information on how the Red Oak ISD PD is training to protect our schools from danger is in this exclusive report. All coming up next on this edition of Hawkeye News. You're watching Hawkeye News with Christian Henson, Natalie Hillary, Sports with Brady Sapp, News coverage from the Junior High Bureau with Lexi Below, and What's New at the WC with India Fernandez. Plus, academic and student life reports with our Hawkeye News team. Hawkeye News, leadership you can depend on. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to the first edition of Hawkeye News for the class of 2006. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. It's back to school time once again and a new season for us here at Hawkeye News. Natalie and I will be your hosts this year on Hawkeye News, brought to you monthly by Had It and Project Success. We would like to thank Red Oak ISD for giving us the opportunity to bring you news from around the district. At the end of our program, we'll tell you how you can contact us and give us your comments and suggestions, as well as any ideas for news stories. Before we get started with this month's headlines, we want to welcome to our show our 2005-2006 reporters. First, we go to senior Kara Miles, who is standing by with a special look at new faces around Red Oak High School and the district. Welcome, Kara. Thanks, Christian and Natalie. It's great to join the Hawkeye News team. Coming up, we'll meet a lot of new faces around our campus this year and introduce you to some new teachers across the district and much more coming up later in the show. Christian and Natalie, back to you. Thanks, Kara. We look forward to that in just a few moments. But first, we want to introduce more new faces to the team and welcome sophomore Katherine Martinez to the show. What's the word from the stadium, Katherine? Well, ladies, just a short time ago, our very own Goodloe Stadium was the host location for the 2005 Relay for Life Cancer Walk. I'll bring you more on the walk later in the show. Kristen and Natalie, back to you. Thanks, Katherine, and welcome to the Hawkeye News team. We also want to welcome more new faces to the show as we go to the band hall to see what's in store for that Mighty Hawk band. Let's go to Mighty Hawk band member and now Hawkeye News reporter, Leslie Rangel. Leslie? 
it looks to be another exciting year for that Mighty Hawk Band as new student leaders take over to lead the band on the field and new faces are also joining Mr. Peace in the area of band instruction this year. I will have more on the band later. Christian and Natalie, it's great to be here. Back to you. And while Katie Sanglin, junior high reporter Alexa Belote, and photojournalist reporter Curtis Kelsey are back, some of them find themselves on new turf. But not crime reporter J.D. Foster, who is also back with this important story. How safe are our schools? This question is not one that is taken lightly by the Red Oak ISD Police Department. I'm J.D. Foster. Coming up, I'll have a full report on how law enforcement officials here in Red Oak are teaming up with the Ellis County Sheriff's Department to participate in an important program that could one day save our lives. Thanks, J.D. We look forward to hearing more about that later. Also new this year to Hawkeye News, reporter Katie Stanglin no longer patrols the halls of the West Campus, but will bring us news from the main campus. And this month, she'll bring our students a look back at this summer's Hawkeye News Banquet, while Curtis will team up this year with fellow junior Brandon Scott as the new dynamic duo of sports. The final new face on the team is that of freshman India Fernandez, who takes over the segment, What's New at the WC? So let's go to India to see what she has for us this month. Thanks, ladies. I am also really excited to be a part of the Hawkeye News team, and I will be looking for great stories to bring you from the West Campus this year, like the one this month on two new faces on the West Campus, those of Officer Brian Dumstorff and his K-9 partner, Sandy. I have full report coming up later in the show. It certainly looks like we're off and running on another power-packed show, and with all the new crew along with us veterans returning, we hope to bring you as much great news, sports, and information as possible this year. Coming up on this edition of Hawkeye News. With all the devastation caused by Hurricane Katrina in August, Americans all over the country are being asked to lend a hand in the relief efforts. This month, the good students of Red Oak High School and around the district have joined together to help raise much needed money for the American Red Cross. We'll have information on how you can help. Plus, students from Red Oak High School and around the district also join together for the national event See You at the Poll. Hawkeye News reporter Leslie Rangel will have a full report about this student-led day of prayer that is observed across the United States. A full report coming up later in our show. Also, Red Oak is again moving from a small town into what many feel will someday be a city of over 40,000 residents. New houses are popping up everywhere and along with it come new restaurants and other businesses that are eager to fill the need for Red Oak citizens. We'll take a look around town and see some of these new locations straight ahead. Red Oak recently held its annual Founders Day celebration at Old Town Park and Hawkeye News reporter Katie Singlin was there to bring us an inside look at this year's festivities. And finally, Hawkeye News crime reporter J.D. Foster returns with a follow-up report concerning steroid use. This month, J.D. recaps some important information covered last year in order to keep students and parents informed and aware of the dangers surrounding the use of steroids. News students can use, all coming up next on this edition of Hawkeye News. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to this edition of Hawkeye News for September 2005. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. September was a busy month in Red Oak ISD and we have lots to bring you as we approach the holiday season. Over the past month, we've seen many heartbreaking images on TV as our nation tries to recover from the tragic aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. We here at Hawkeye News send our thoughts and prayers to the many families who have lost loved ones during this vicious act of Mother Nature. That's right, Christian. We also want to give thanks to those paramedics, police, firefighters, and all who are volunteering to aid in the search and rescue efforts. Hawkeye News is committed to bringing you more news and stories from across the district during this month's extended team coverage. First, we go to Hawkeye News anchor Katie Sanglin, who is on assignment this month and joins us from Founders Day Parade and festivities. Katie? Thanks, Christian and Natalie. Founders Day is a community event held every year so the people of our community can come together and celebrate with a little food and fun. This year's Founders Day was held on September 10th, and the theme was around the world. I'll have information on all the performances, the many different kinds of food, and booths that benefited schools, churches, and other organizations around Red Oak. This event marks the 27th annual Founders Day celebration, and I'll have all the info on the parade and events held this day later in the show. Back to you, Natalie and Christian. Thanks, Katie. We look forward to hearing about that and much more. Plus, our extended team coverage continues with a look at what's to come on this edition of Hawkeye News. In a recent national survey, 70% of student athletes said they had not received information about the dangers of performance enhancing drugs while on their sports teams from their coaches. It is sometimes thought that coaches look the other way or perhaps even condone the use of these drugs. 
I'm J.D. Foster. Coming up in this month's Crime Report, we'll take our final look at the dangers of steroids and remind students and parents of their irreversible and sometimes deadly side effects. A full report later in our show. I'm Leslie Rangel, just outside Red Oak High School, where students from around the district join together for a national event held each September. Coming up, I will have a full report on a student-led day of prayer that is observed across the United States called See You at the Pole. Details on why this event takes place and the impact it has on students everywhere. But first, back to Christian Natalie for this month's Top Stories. Hawkeye News starts now. spectacular Halloween edition of Hawkeye News for October 2005. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. It's Halloween time again here on Hawkeye News, and we have lots of fun activities to report as well as interesting stories to share. That's right. Before we get started with this month's haunting headlines, we want to take a sneak peek at this year's feature Halloween story. We go now to Hawkeye News anchor Kara Miles, who is on location at Reindeer Manor and brings us some ghoulish information on local Halloween events taking place in and around Ellis County this year. Kara? Thanks, Christian Natalie, and happy Halloween to all our viewers of Hawkeye News. Last year, you may remember Hawkeye News brought you an exclusive inside look at the Munster's Mansion in Waxahachie. Although the Munster's House will once again be open for its annual Halloween party this year, we have some new information to share. Ranger Manor has expanded their haunted attraction for 2005. The second and newest attraction is the 13th Street Morgue. Its evil history and shadowed halls now fill the main barn of the manor. We'll also have some information on the world's largest Halloween theme park, Screams. We'll talk about some of the park's highlighted attractions and its four haunted houses. Hawkeye News brings you up to date with the latest information on these haunted attractions coming up later in the show. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. We look forward to hearing that coming later in our show. Also, we'll have some tips on how to make Halloween a safe and fun holiday for trick-or-treating. Once again, Hawkeye News is committed to bringing you more news and stories from all across the district, as well as in the community, with this month's top stories. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to this Thanksgiving edition of Hawkeye News for November 2005. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. The holiday season is a time to be with family and friends and a time to give thanks, especially to those who have given us the opportunity to have what we have, a free country. That's right, Natalie. Later, we will have highlights from the high school's Veterans Day Assembly, as well as visiting Red Oak Elementary to see what their awesome assembly was like as they showed respect for those who have served their country in the military. But first, this month's top stories. Hawkeye News starts now. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Welcome to this Christmas edition of Hawkeye News. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Katie Stanglin. Natalie's out for this month. We have a lot to bring you this month as the holidays are here and Christmas break is just around the corner. Several things have happened in and around our district this month. And later in the show, Brady Sapp will be with us to bring us the last 2005 Hawkeye News Sports, just as basketball season is arriving. Also, students are bringing joy to many as they're volunteering their time to help those in need this holiday season. And our last Junior High Review and District in 60 Seconds are coming up later in our show. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas! Hello, Christian. Hello, Katie. Have you been good ladies this year? Yes, we have. Christian, Katie, I've been checking my list, and I checked it once, and I have found out y'all have been good girls this year. So I have brought two presents for you. I'm going to place them under the tree. 
Well, I have to go. I have lots of boys and girls to see. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Take care. Ho, ho, ho. Bye, Santa. And now for this month's top stories. holiday season, Hawkeye News has something besides Christmas and New Year's to celebrate. It's our December show marking our 35th episode and our fourth year anniversary. Hawkeye News first hit the airwaves back in August of 2002. The pilot episode of Hawkeye News was first recorded at the ROISD Administration Building. Our first anchors, Rachel Selvey, Heather Blackwood, and sports anchor Brian Walkos reported the news in front of the chroma key for the entire show, with only a small folding table for a news desk. These pioneers started Hawkeye News on its path, providing students news they could use and leadership they could depend on. After the cast and crew worked hard cleaning and preparing the generous donation of a classroom at the Acorn Academy, the news team moved on to the current Hawkeye News studio. The first year also showed off our junior high students, who are now our anchors, Christian Henson and Brady Sapp. New seasons brought new faces and awards. In 2003, the news team won second place in the nation for best high school news show by Varsity Television. Hawkeye News is proud to still be on the air after 35 episodes, consisting of over 32 hours of positive news and information about our school district and our city. With the generosity of our sponsors, as well as Project Success and Red Oak ISD, the show will continue to bring the good news around Red Oak ISD. We thank Mr. Shutman, Mr. Watson, and all the teachers at the high school and junior high who allow us into your classrooms each month. We know your time is valuable, but we hope you'll allow your students to watch the show. Thanks also to each of the other schools who show Hawkeye News in your classrooms each month. up on this edition of Hawkeye News. Recently, Principal Mr. Shutman announced that another member of the successful Tennant family has received a special award. This time, it is the youngest of the Tennant boys. Details on this special announcement straight ahead. Plus, since the second semester of school is crunch time for many of us, especially as seniors, we check in with our academic counselor's office to see what students need to know for the spring semester. News seniors can use coming up. Also, Assistant Principal Ms. Tier was recently named Assistant Principal of the Year for Region 10. Out of the 70 schools in Region 10, Ms. Tier was the only Assistant Principal to receive this honor from the region. And finally, after all the Happy New Year greetings and celebrations have come and gone, many people reflect on their lives and think about making positive changes. This month, Hawkeye News reporter Katherine Martinez asked Red Oak High School students and staff what their New Year's resolutions are for this year. All coming up next on this edition of Hawkeye News. You're watching Hawkeye News with Christian Henson, Natalie Hillary, Sports with Brady Sapp, News coverage from the Junior High Bureau with Lexi Below, and What's New at the WC with India Fernandez. Plus, academic and student life reports with our Hawkeye News team. Hawkeye News. Leadership you can depend on. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to the first edition of Hawkeye News for January 2006. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. It's good to be back in the studio after a long winter's break. 
the holidays are over and it's back to work. We hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas holiday and are looking forward to a happy new year. Hawkeye News is back with more stories and information students can use. And later in our show, we'll give you an inside look at our newly developed website, the official network of Hawkeye News. Students, teachers, and anyone in the world can visit us on the World Wide Web. If you've missed an episode of Hawkeye News, you can watch it at www.hawkeye-news.com. Hawkeye News is committed to bringing you the great news around Red Oak ISD and the community in 2006 with our extended team coverage. I'm Leslie Ringel, inside of the new Red Oak Elementary School. Coming up, I'll have a full report on just how much our city has grown over the past few years, and we'll take a look at some new businesses coming to town. While our city is growing, so is our school district, and with that comes the need for new facilities. I'll take you inside the newest edition of Red Oak ISD later in the ship. I'm India Fernandez, just outside the West Campus. What's new at the WC? The ninth grade student council hosted a drive to help families in need this holiday season by donating canned goods to the Red Oak Area Outreach. I'll have details on how the food was distributed straight ahead. I'm Katie Stanglin in Duncanville, just outside the Duncanville High School Natatorium, where Red Oak High School's new swim team meets. Yes, swim team. And this year that means another area of UIL competition for Red Oak High School. I'll introduce you to these new members and the swim team and show you how you can support these new student athletes. This story and much more later in sports. In the Red Oak school system, over 50 students were caught and criminally charged with fighting the 2004-2005 school year. Today, we have had 15 fights in which charges have been filed for disorderly conduct. I'm J.D. Foster in front of Red Oak Police Department. Coming up in this month's Crime Report, we take a closer look at a major issue facing today's young adults, fighting. But first, back to Christian and Natalie for this month's top stories. Hawkeye News is proud to announce the development and launch of its new website, www.hawkeye-news.com. Alan J. Oliver Productions, in partnership with Project Success, made the announcement of the site's official release in mid-January. The website is complete with information on our cast and crew, as well as past members of the Hawkeye News team. See the photo gallery and read information about anchors and reporters. The site also allows visitors to view any Hawkeye News episode, starting with December 2005. This month's episode will be posted immediately at press time. Learn about some of the other programs and events produced by Project Success and Alan J. Oliver Productions, such as Shattered Dreams, the movies, and the Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant. Also, learn how to join Hawkeye News or seek information about a Project Success scholarship. Learn about our generous sponsors and how you can help keep Red Oak ISC drug-free and proud. If you have a news tip and want to let us know, you can fill out our EZ form and even submit video if available. Parents can be involved with Hawkeye News by videotaping a sporting event or other activity. Students can sign up for an audition call announced annually for new cast and crew members. Coming soon, the site will feature classic Hawkeye News clips with episodes from 2002 to 2004. Also, clips from the Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant. Learn how to get your copy of any Hawkeye News episode or Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant by visiting www.hawkeye-news.com. In addition, a survey and rating system will be developed on the site so students can let us know what they learned from Hawkeye News by watching our academic and student life reports, and more importantly, from our monthly crime report featuring topics dealing with drug and alcohol awareness. Hawkeye News episodes can be seen on the site anytime. Please let us know you stop by and sign up for our low volume newsletter. It will keep you up to date on the latest release of Hawkeye News and other special announcements. Again, the website is www.hawkeye-news.com. on this edition of Hawkeye News. Every two years, the University Interscholastic League realigns schools for UIL competitions. While athletics seem to draw the most interest in realignment, it also determines which schools will compete in UIL competitions. Find out what new UIL districts Red Oak IC will be facing in the 2006-2008 school years coming up. 
While we really enjoy reporting on all of our stories here at Hawkeye News, it is especially nice to be able to report on students who take time to give to others. This month, Hawkeye News reporter Katie Stanglin shares with us how she broke out of her comfort zone to make a difference in the life of another. The full story, straight ahead. Plus, the Red Oak ISD Practical Parenting Program, along with the Ellis County PTAs, hosted the annual Mother and Father of the Year Award Ceremony in mid-February. The program is designed to let students nominate their parents for a special award. Find out who this year's winners are later in our show. Also, in one of the biggest events of the year, the Project Success Drug Education Program put on a night of laughs at the annual Mr. and Mrs. Bredo pageant held on February 18th. The cafetorium was packed with supporters and they were not disappointed. We have highlights. And finally, Hawkeye News cast members were invited to attend the Red Oak Elementary Health and Safety Fair, where news team members had a great time signing autographs for many young fans and talking to them about leadership you can depend on. Learn how the Hawkeye News team could soon be visiting your classroom. All coming up next on this edition of Hawkeye News. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to this Valentine's edition of Hawkeye News for February 2006. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. As winter comes to its final stages, we start to think of fun things such as spring break and outdoor sports. And with that comes warmer temperatures. Things are beginning to heat up as we take a look ahead with our wonderful counselors as they get us ready for the final academic push of the year. Plus, as all of you know, one of the biggest events of the year, the Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant was held in mid-February. Joining us now from the Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant is Hawkeye News reporter Alex Ordonez with a sneak peek at this year's wild and crazy performances. Alex? Thanks, Christian and Natalie. You're right. This year's Mr. and Mrs. Red Oak pageant was packed with fans as contestants from many schools throughout the district did their best to impress the judges, all in an effort to raise money for Project Success and Jeffrey Red Oak ISD students. I'll bring you highlights from the pageant and reveal this year's winners later in our show, a story you will only see here on Hawkeye News. Thanks, Alex. We look forward to hearing much more about this year's pageant later in our show. Hawkeye News continues to bring you more news and information from in and around Red Oak ISD with our extended team coverage. And before we get started, here's Hawkeye News reporter J.D. Foster to tell us about this month's crime report. J.D.? February is the month for love. Flowers every week, like these here at Petals Plus Florist in Red Oak, or a box of Godiva chocolates. Love letters, special valentines, and someone waiting for you everywhere you go. How could that be bad? Isn't getting notes and gifts at your home, in your locker, or other places sweet and harmless? Coming up in this month's Crime Report, we'll talk about another destructive behavior that can be harmful or even deadly, not only to students, but to adults as well. But first, back to Christian and Natalie for this month's Top Stories. Coming up on this edition of Hawkeye News. The Safe School Committee of Red Oak ISD carried out the 2006 mock disaster drill in early March. The full-scale disaster drill was a mock explosion and fire at Wynn Elementary. Fourth grade students took part as actors in the mock disaster and helped the Red Oak Crisis Response Team and local emergency services work on their life-saving skills. The full story straight ahead. This month, West Campus reporter India Fernandez brings us a story of a familiar face around Red Oak High School, that of a man who really enjoys life and never takes anything for granted. Everett Teague is a 21-year-old student and has been with the CBI here at Red Oak High School for six years. Hear more about Everett in this Student Life Report coming up later in our show. Plus, production has begun on the New Shattered Dreams 2006 motion picture. Alan J. Oliver Productions, in cooperation with Project Success, Had It, and Red Oak High CPD, are producing the fourth installment to the Shattered Dreams movie slated for release in May. Coming up, hear more about this year's Shattered Dreams program and get a behind-the-scenes look at the making of this year's film. And finally, do you know the consequences of criminal behavior? Did you know you could receive a ticket for fighting, using profanity, stink bombs, and other disorderly conduct related crimes? Coming up in this month's Crime Report, J.D. Foster takes us inside the Ellis County Juvenile Services facility. New students can use all coming up next in this edition of Hawkeye News. Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to this edition of Hawkeye News for March 2006. I'm Christian Hinson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. There's a lot to report around Red Oak this month as we're back from spring break and getting prepared for the final stretch for the class of 2006. We hope everyone enjoyed their time off. Hawkeye News is all over the district with more news, sports, and information as we begin with this month's top stories. 
Hawkeye News starts now. Welcome to our final edition of Hawkeye News for the class of 2006. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. Soon it will be time for senior walk, prom, and graduation. It's also a time for seniors to look back at their high school career while looking forward to their future as we all must work hard to keep our academic goals in focus the remainder of the year, especially on those dreaded final exams. And with so many warm weather events coming up, it can be hard to think of homework and studying. Many of us have been busy with activities and schoolwork. This month, Hawkeye News takes a look back at April and a look ahead at May as we begin with this month's top stories. The Hawkeye News team recently visited elementary school classrooms throughout the district to talk with students about what it's like to be a part of Hawkeye News and about leadership. The news team recently traveled to Wood in Red Oak Elementary to share with students the topic of leadership, as well as to answer questions about doing our new show. It is our hope that these young students may be some of the faces of the future for Hawkeye News and will continue to develop into positive leaders in their schools. The students were very well behaved and showed wonderful manners and attention. The experience was wonderful for my fellow news anchors. It's great to see that there are many younger students who will be there to carry on the traditions of Hawkeye News. to thank all the teachers and students who welcomed us into their classrooms on this year's tour. The entire newscast had a great time and enjoyed visiting with students. 